Hi there, welcome to Board Gems. This is my regular video series in which I cover an older board game that I insist is a gem. And some of these gems are old and they haven't been reprinted in a long time, but there are some gems that keep getting printed and printed and reprinted, just new editions every few years because it's just a great game and the publishers know it. And they insist that you find out about this game because it's so great. And this is one of those games it's been in print since 2002 or 2003. The newest edition is just 2021. So the game is Crazy Chicken. So Crazy Chicken is for two players only. It's part of the Ravensburger Fun for Two line. Um, I actually have covered a previous game in this series. There's only five games in the series, but this is the second game to appear from that series in Board Gems, the other one being Baker Street. Uh, it's for two players only. Uh, ages eight and up and takes probably about 30 minutes to play, especially if you play with a full four rounds, but you could play two or three rounds. I do recommend playing more than one round though, because the game can be a little bit swingy. Now, like I said, this came out in around 2003 and a couple of years later, this one's German only, but a couple of years later, there was an English edition from Simply Fun called Drive. So that was the English printing of Crazy Chicken, new art, new setting, English language, basically the same game. Although, whereas Crazy Chicken is a two-player only game, uh, Drive added rules for three or four players. And then we didn't hear anything from the series for a while until 2012-ish, uh, when White Goblin got the rights, and they put out a game called Call to Glory. Exact same game, it's again for two to four players, although it also comes with some variants. 2021, White Goblin releases a new version, so just this year called Littlewood. Now they're all the same game. They all come with the same deck of 110 cards, but each version is a little bit different. And I will say Littlewood is also a two to four player game, like all the versions since Crazy Chicken. Um, but it, it, the main game now, instead of coming with variants, they've changed the base game by adding something to it, which I have an opinion on, but we'll get to that later. I'm going to first show you how Crazy Chicken plays. Then I'm going to talk about the difference uh, with Drive. Then I'm going to talk about the difference between Call to Glory. And then I'm going to talk about the difference in Littlewood. For the whole set, though, I'm going to use Littlewood's cards. Because, again, this is the edition you're more likely to find. So let's get started. First, I'm going to teach you how to play Crazy Chicken. I'm going to use a little wood components, but I'm going to teach you the rules from the original Robinsberger edition of Crazy Chicken, which came out in the early 2000s, which is a two player only game. The game consists of a deck of cards with various values, and you can see the values. There's the highest is 20 and the lowest is uh, six, I believe. And the number is how many points that suit that value is worth at the end of the round, but also how many cards there are in the deck. So there's 14 14s and 20 20s and so on. So you're going to shuffle up the deck, give each player three cards, then split the deck into half and place them in the middle of the table, something like that. You want to leave room in the middle for two discard piles. The goal of the game is to make sets of the different values of cards, so a set of 20s, a set of 8s, and so on and to have them face up in front of you in your own personal tableau. Each set can only be in front of one player at a time. So only one player will, at most, will have the 20s. Only one player at most will have the 18s, and so on. And when the round ends, you're going to score that number in points for every set you have in front of you. So if at the end of the round you have the 20s, the 14s, and the 6s in front of you, those sets, then you're going to score 40 points in the round. In a regular two-player game, you would play multiple rounds. The rule book suggests four. On a player's turn, they draw two cards, and then they either discard one or play a set in front of themselves. So if I have, say, a hand of three cards, something like this, the first thing I do on my turn is I draw two cards. Now, there will be, over the course of the game, four piles two draw piles, as well as two discard piles. You can take the two cards from anywhere, but they have to come from different piles. 
So if you like the top face-up card here, you can take it, but then the second card you take can't be from the same pile. It would have to be from one of these three. Obviously, at the start of the game, you'll be taking one card from here and one card from there. Then you have a choice to make. You can either discard a card or play a set. If you discard a card, you take one card from your hand and place it in one of the two face-up discard piles. You can choose which one, except if there's already a card present on one pile and there isn't a card in the other pile and you discard, it would have to go into this pile. So you would have to have, when possible, two discard piles going at the same time. Or you can play a set. To play a set, you need at least two cards of the same value. You take those cards, place them face up in front of you, and now you have control of the 18s. At the end of the round, if this is still in front of you, you're going to score 18 points. The only way this set can go in front of another player, if another player can play 18s, is to play a set with more cards. By playing two, I have 18, but later on, any player, including me even, could play three 18s or four 18s or five 18s. And then they would control the 18s and I would have to discard mine. I would take all the cards in the set, put them in one pile, and then pick one discard pile to put them on. Importantly, you cannot add to a set once it's placed in front of you. So even if later on I draw more 18s, I cannot add to this set. This is kind of locked in. However, I, like other players, can replace it by playing a bigger set. If later on I play three 18s or four 18s, I would discard this set and then play my new set. And this continues just back and forth like this until one of a couple things happens. When one of these piles runs out, the round will end. That's pretty unusual. In a two-player game, the game can also end either when one player has six sets in front of them Keep in mind there's nine suits, so one player has six suits in front of them, or all nine suits are present at the table. And then you score the points shown on each set. So if you have the set of 18s, you will score 18 points, regardless of how many 18s are in there. So that's it, you're ready to play Crazy Chicken. Then came Drive. Now Drive is exactly the same game, except instead of the crazy chicken artwork, instead to have cars, they also have a small little board, which is unnecessary, but nice. But Drive is for two to four players. The rules are exactly the same, except the end condition is a little bit different. While the game can end when one player has six suits in a two-player game, it can end in a three-player game when one player has five sets, and in a four-player game when one player has four sets. And that's the only difference between Crazy Chicken and Drive. And now there's Call to Glory. The base game of Call to Glory, again, is exactly the same. It's still a two to four player game like Drive. They did change some of the suits such that in a three or four player game, in order to start a set, you can't start with two cards. You can start, you would have to start with three or more instead of two or more. Just a couple of the suits. I'm sure that's done for balance reasons. A little bit weird, but okay. The Call to Glory rules actually come with two variants, which are kind of neat. In the Ninja variant, all the 14s, let's see if I can find a 14 here. All the 14s, which in this game are weasels? In Crazy Chicken, they're Napoleon chickens. <laughs> but in Call to Glory, they're ninjas. And the special rule about the 14s is that whenever a player plays a set of 14s, they get a little ninja piece, a little ninja mini. There's four of them. And they hang on to that, including over multiple rounds. And on their turn, they can choose to play a ninja, a ninja mini, in order to kill basically a card in front of another player, decreasing their the size of their set. Nice little variant, it adds just a little bit more interactivity. And there's another rule which is uh, has scoring cards and each round, each player, at the beginning of the game, each player will have a, a set of uh, scoring cards that are drawn randomly and each round they have to play one and that round will dedicate extra scoring 
for particular suits. That's also kind of neat. I haven't really played that one, but it's kind of neat. It's adds some variety, some nice little mini expansions to include in Call to Glory. And now the rule change for Littlewood. Littlewood comes with these extra cards, lettered A, B, and C. Each pile you're going to mix up and then draw a certain number. Start with the C's. It's six in a three or four player game and it's just five in a two player game. So I'll set this up for a two player game. Put them in a row, then do the same for the B's and make sort of a reverse pyramid. So you're gonna add the cards like that. And finally the A's. You get to claim a card from this side pile here whenever you play a set. When you play a set in front of you, you get to take any card that's in this display that isn't covered by another card. So at the start of the round, you would be limited to these three cards. But of course, if you take this one, now you're exposing this one. These cards do two different things. One, some of them, starting with the, the B row here, have little bonuses. When you get the card, you get that bonus. So a lot of them are like draw a free card from a draw pile, or maybe kill a card that's in front of another player, but they also contribute to end game scoring. The round will end either when a pile runs out, still rare, or more likely, much more likely, there's just two of these cards left. At the end of the round, you will count the number of different symbols in the cards you've collected, noting that some of them have in fact two symbols, and you're going to multiply that by the number of the symbol that you have the most in. So if you have five different symbols and you have of those symbols, the most you have are pine cones and pine cones are, uh, you have three of them, then your score at the end will be 15. And that's a bonus score that you add, just like in the regular game, to the points you have for the sets in front of you. Now the game does not end when one player has a certain number of sets or all the suits are in front of the players. That's not officially an endgame condition anymore. Officially, Littlewood is just one round, but of course you can play it multiple rounds just like the older editions. That's it. You're ready to play Littlewood. So I'm going to say right up front, this is one of my favorite two-player games of all time. I think I previously said that my favorite two-player game of all time was the Rose King, uh, which was the second board gem I've ever done. But they're kind of in different genres, right? The Rose King is a kind of a serious chess checkers reversey like game, right? It's, it's abstract and there's luck unlike those games, but it still takes itself very seriously. This game doesn't at all. This is a, a kind of a light breezy two player card game, but it can be tense. Oh, that's what I love about it. I love the tension in the game because when you have these nine different suits, nine different values, right? And the round can end either when all nine are out in front of the players or one player gets six. And that can almost sometimes be a little bit of a tug of war. I can get a bunch of small sets out early if I'm lucky. And if I can get six sets down, then I'm going to win probably by a lot. But it's really hard to get to six. And the other player uh, might, in the meantime, while I'm trying to get that sixth, the other player is probably chipping away at mine, you know, getting the 20 away, getting the 18. It's a really nice back and forth. It reminds me a little bit of Lost Cities because of the way the discards come into play, right? You want to discard a card, but you don't want to, the other player to have an opportunity to get it, right? So, you know, it's like, do I discard this? Maybe I'll try to hang on to it. But of course, it's taking up space in your hand. And I think that's a reasonable comparison. In fact, there's a review on the Crazy Chicken slash Drive a BGG page, which says something to the effect of Crazy Chicken is the two-player game that Lost Cities wants to be. <laughs> Strong words, right? But I'm 100% in agreement. There's nothing wrong with Lost Cities. It's a great two-player game, and it's really tense and all that stuff. But everything, all those good qualities that Lost City has, pretty much Crazy Chicken has. But Crazy Chicken feels a bit breezier, but it still has that tension. It has a lot of tension, and it's more direct tension with the other player. Because in Lost Cities, you know, you're playing, you know, blues. Your opponent may be playing blues, and there are some tensions there in terms of discarding. But in the end, you're both trying to score positive points. 
this is more the case where only one player is going to score blue. <laughs> and you might be scoring blue now, but I'm going to work hard to take it from you. Does it feel a little confrontational? Maybe. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's a really great two-player game. I recommend. I love, 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 love Crazy Chicken. One thing I will say, though, is it can be a really swingy game. Probably more so than Lost Cities. So you probably don't want to play one round of it. You probably will want to play multiple rounds. Crazy Chicken says to play four rounds, which will make for a bit of a long feeling game, very repetitive game. Still, you can play the four rounds in half hour, maybe a little bit more. But because it's repetitive, four rounds feels like a lot. So you can just play three. There's really not a lot that I can say about Crazy Chicken and why I love it. I want to focus most of the rest of this video on the differences because this game has been printed four different times with four different names and some changes to all of them. So it's really important to me that I talk about the differences in them because they're not all the same. I'd almost go so far as to say that the different editions kind of reflect the times they came out in. So there's a almost 20 years difference between this, uh, these two editions. And if you look at all four editions, they do take different approaches, which are kind of reflective of the time and perhaps even region that they were kind of focused on. Uh, Crazy Chicken was originally German only. Now that came out, I think, 2003 by Ravensburger as part of their Fun for Two line. And I've already covered a game from their Fun for Two line, Baker Street. So check out my video for that. Now the presentation of Crazy Chicken is pretty basic. They're just white cards with numbers in the corner. And the center of the card features some of this kind of silly artwork, right? It has these chickens and they're dressed up like Napoleon and Elvis and uh, Marilyn Monroe and all these ones. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the six. The Marilyn Monroe is the six. Yeah, it's the Marilyn Monroe over the, the vent scene. You know what? That's the six. That's the least common card in the game. Good. <laughs> Once you see that, you can't unsee it, all right? So it's a pretty straightforward, simple presentation, but it's good enough, right? It's good enough. You see the numbers. It's very clear. Certainly, over the years, these kind of Silly, light-hearted settings, artwork placed over top of what otherwise would kind of feel like a serious game, like just a numbers game. I mean, that's kind of German all the way, I feel, right? There's lots of examples of games. And, and later on, too, you know, you have games like, like a Llama, right? Um, a Bluxen, otherwise known as Linko, and, and a number of other ones. And they all kind of share that history I, I assume it's a cultural thing and you know what completely fine and it, it it serves the game fine there's really nothing wrong with that but maybe it's a little bit a little bit plain maybe for today's hobbyists and certainly i don't know about other english-speaking countries but certainly in canada there isn't a huge kind of history of card games with silly artwork on them so I think the United States is the same way, which is why uh, in 2005, I think, just a couple of years later, you had American publisher Simply Fun. Now, Simply Fun published Crazy Chicken in English only, I think, and called it Drive. Now, they changed some of the uh, some of the everything. They changed <laughs> the rules are the same, pretty much. They changed the setting to, I mean, there wasn't really a setting for this one, right? But instead of chickens, they're now cars or vintage cars. Certainly in the mid 2000s, in the English language markets, they were taking some German games and, you know, the, the companies in, say, United States, for example, were taking these German games and they were trying to decide how to retrofit them for the sort of American market and by extension Canadian market and Australian market probably but it's always with a focus on the American market and so you know Crazy Chicken probably that setting was perceived as being a little bit silly maybe more for kids so they wanted to give it a more serious kind of gloss so they give it the vintage cars theme it's fine doesn't really make a big difference um, actually, a nice little touch is that they have different iconography in the corners for the different suits, the different values. 
So that might help a little bit with colorblind uh, friendliness. I mean, Crazy Chicken, the numbers are not colorblind friendly, but then there's the art on the cards, so that's fine. But it's just a little nice, nice touch for Drive. Drive comes with a board, completely superfluous, but it's a nice touch. Um, the main difference with Drive is that whereas Crazy Chicken was presented as a two-player game, Drive was presented as a two to four player game. Now, the difference in how that plays out is that in Crazy Chicken, just like in, and in Drive, the game or round ends when all nine sets, all nine values are present on the table. And in Crazy Chicken and in Drive as a two player game, it can also end when one player gets six sets. In Drive, for three players and four players, the way they do it is that that end game condition is still the same, but it's smaller. So whereas it's six sets in a two player game, it's five sets in a three player game, and it's four sets in a four player game. I will say right up front, before we go any further, it is best as a two player game. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. All right. This is a two player game at its best. And with three and four players, it gets worse and worse again. So three is, it's not bad, but it's kind of eh. You know, in two players, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of time to go back and forth. And that creates a lot of tension. Oh, you know, my opponent's got a lot of sets there. Will I have a chance to, to try to catch them up? And in drive, when you're playing with more players, it feels faster or easier for there to be a set of every value on the table so each round feels like it ends like really really quickly it's still fine for a three-player game but if i had played it only three player i'd just be like eh it's fine but two player it's amazing and i'm not even going to try it four player okay maybe with four player somehow it goes from two player which is great three player which is okay to four player which is amazing but i don't think so <laughs> I'm going to use my brain on this, and I'm going to guess that four-player is even worse than three-player, such that I'm not going to even try it four-player. I'm just not going to do it. Four-player, I feel confident in saying, is not worth my time or your time to even try. Um, it is best at a, at a two-player game. It's a two-player game that you can play with three. How about that? So otherwise, those two games are basically identical. And you can certainly backport those three or four player rules to Crazy Chicken. The components are the same, except Drive has a board. That's it. But then we get into Call to Glory, which is White Goblin's first edition of this game, which came out in 2012. Now, they did change a few different things. The game is still exactly the same for two players assuming you don't use any of the included variants. They did tweak the three and four player games slightly and that a couple of the suits, you see normally in a game of crazy chicken slash drive, you need at least two cards in order to play in front of you to form a set. It can be more, but it has to be at least two. And in call to glory in a three or four player game, actually they changed some of the suits so that you have to play at least three cards in order to form a suit instead of two. I assume that's just to kind of slow the game down a little bit, because otherwise the, you know, it can be too easy for everybody to just put down two cards and then the round is over. It's kind of this generic Japanese ninja theme. Um, and I can totally imagine the people at White Goblin were thinking, oh, ninjas are cool. Let's, let's take this game that we know is good and let's put a ninja theme on it and then the hobbyists will love it, right? But it's almost false advertising in that case because it's a card game with numbers on it and people are going to see this game. First of all, like on the shelf, it's going to be, you know, kind of a samurai, I suppose, on the cover and kind of this generic name, Call to Glory. And either one of two things are going to happen. One, it's going to blend in with all the other cool games on the shelf and nothing about this one stands out. Or they're going to look at it, the customer is going to look at it and go, hey, that actually looks pretty cool. And then they'll take it down, they'll buy it, they'll play it, and that theme and setting won't really come out because it's just a card game with, with the cards have numbers. You don't want people who think ninjas are cool to buy this game and play this game because they're 
I just feel like a lot of those people aren't going to be the type of people who think this game is cool. Do you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, just my opinion. But certainly there were a lot of companies that were like that in the early 2010s, just wanting to take existing great games and make them cooler. Doesn't really work. But I will say that Call to Glory does have a couple of variants, one of which it does kind of fit the setting. So the 14 suit, which in Crazy Chicken is... Uh, Napoleon, the Napoleon chicken. Um, in Call to Glory, it's the ninjas. And there's a variant you can play in which when you play a set of four teens to the table, you get a ninja. On a future turn, even in a future round, on your future turn, you may play your ninja, discard it, to kill off one of the cards in front of the other players. Little variant doesn't necessarily do a lot, but it does a little. And that's a little bit of interaction. So that's pretty cool. The other variant is players are dealt a small hand of bonus cards. And you play, I think, three rounds. And every round, each player has to kind of secretly play one. And that card uh, represents a suit that's like going to score extra that round. So you have partial information, but you don't know what the other players are playing. So it kind of ups the stakes a little bit. Makes it for an exciting third round because you won't have much choice. But, um, you know, it, it's fine. I haven't actually really played that. They do have Call to Glory on yukata.de. And I do recommend you, you check it out. It's a great game. But I do want to warn you that on Board Game Geek, the listing, the entry for Call to Glory, the poll suggests that Call to Glory is best with three players. No way. Okay, don't even believe that. It's best as a two-player game still. All of these are best two player. Well, okay. At some point, we're going to get to Littlewood. The last thing I'll say is that um, about Call to Glory is that it comes in a tin. I'll actually say that I do like uh, card games in tins. I have a very small collection of them. For example, this is my copy of uh, Zex Nimt, which is now known as Take Five. And it's uh, from Amigo. Amigo had a few of these, including Wizard and Bonanza, that come in this uh, very nice little tin. And I like it quite a bit. I love those tins. White Goblin tins are not those tins. Um, the White Goblin tins are closer in style to Forbidden Island, if you're familiar with that. In that the bottom, it has a lip. A lip that goes around. So it, the tin comes all the way down. But if you look at the bottom, the edge is... Um, is kind of raised compared to the, the main part of the box bottom. So the box bottom is kind of recessed and there's a raised edge. Hate it. <laughs> I hate a strong word, but they don't really stack very well. Even if you can find a couple of games with similar tins and you stack them, they'll probably like start sliding off. It's not great. Um, it's not anywhere close to the quality of these ones. I'm sorry to give Call to Glory a hard time. Call to Glory is great. The variants that it comes with are great. And maybe the ninja theme is fine to some people. I just think it's kind of overused and, and tired. But speaking of themes and settings, let's talk about Littlewood. So this is the newest iteration that came out from White Goblin. So the same people who made Call to Glory, eight, nine, ten years later, they're back with a new version of the same game called Littlewood. And it still comes with a deck of, I think, 110 cards, 2020s, 1818s, and so on, all the way down to 6-6s. Six so you can play the exact same game. Now, there are a few little differences and one big difference. So firstly, can I talk about the anthropomorphic animals a bit? Because, again, I like to say that this box or this setting again, is a reflection of the time it comes out in. And anthropomorphic animals are so common now in games. You have games like Raccoon Tycoon and, and oh my God, just, you know, Everdell and, and all these ones, Shadows Over Amsterdam. They're, they're just the, tons and tons of games that have these anthropomorphic animals. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of it. I'm really tired of this new thing where they, they slap a bunch of, you know, walking on their hind leg animals and they think that's the cool thing nowadays well okay crazy chicken had those too <laughs> it's different somehow it really is trust me it's different 
Crazy Chicken, the anthropomorphic animal bit didn't even really matter, but now they're just leaning into this a lot. And they're kind of, look, it's kind of tribal. That's kind of cool, right? So it's a bit fantastical. And yeah, that's the trend now. Fantastical. Um, especially if you can put anthropomorphic animals. Everybody loves those, right? Super cute. Well, again, it's just a card game with numbers on it. So I guess it doesn't matter. If you don't care about getting used copies or new copies, you can find whichever theme and setting appeals to you the most. This is certainly would probably be the one that's easiest to get new, um, used. Crazy Chicken might be hard to find. I'm not sure about Drive. I know because Drive was by Simply Fun, and I don't think Simply Fun really sold outside the U.S. So if unless you're in the U.S., Drive might be hard to find. I'm not sure about Call to Glory. But Call to Glory didn't set the world on fire. So maybe it's not too hard to get it used. But if you're looking for that same game new, that's Littlewood that came out 2021. The artwork is quite lovely, if you like this style of artwork. Uh, I will say that all the numbers on the cards look kind of the same. You know, most of the editions, every card types, every card value is a different color. So like in Crazy Chicken, the uh, 20s are brown and the 18s are purple or something like that, right? But everyone's a different color. And a little wood, that's not the case. All the cards are white with some green and brown on them. Um, it's not a huge, huge deal. The numbers are quite clear, but when they're different colors, it helps stand out a little bit. Minor thing, but... But let's talk about the main change. So this is the, the biggest change that has been done to the entire series is in this game here. And that besides 110 regular deck of cards... Uh, it also comes with a dozen or so um, what they call prey cards. Prey seems like a weird name since we're talking about berries and pine cones and stuff, but prey for the small woodland animals. There's this uh, sort of reverse pyramid familiar to people who maybe have played Seven Wonders Duel. And the idea is that whenever you play a set, you get one of the cards that are face up. One of the ones that aren't covered. So you you start with a couple of simple ones, and then those will expose more, which are kind of more powerful and so on. And some of them give you kind of special powers. They allow you to draw a, a free card, allow you to kill off uh, another card, like, like the ninja in Call to Glory. Um, but the main thing on them are symbols. And the idea is you, you want to collect a lot of these different symbols, and you also want to collect a lot of one symbol because those two numbers are multiplied. You look at how many different symbols you've collected, and you look at how many you've collected of the one you collected the most in, and you multiply those two numbers together, and that's some bonus end game scoring. I like the idea of bonus end game scoring. That's generally a good thing. You kind of get a feel for who's winning during the game, but you don't know because there's some end game scoring that's going to happen. And then once you figure out that end game scoring, then maybe the person who's behind manages to jump ahead. I'm not against this sort of thing, but it just does not work here. At least in a two player game, I will say I didn't try this three or four player because again, Crazy Chicken has always been best as a two player game. So my first thing when I got Littlewood is I tried a two-player. And that's, it's horrible. This prey card thing is horrible. There's, there's kind of two main problems with it. One is now the, the tension about having different numbers of sets. Like I'm trying to get to six sets, you know, and you're trying to chip away at me before I get to six. Um, there's a huge amount of tension in that, which is now gone because the game no longer ends when one player has six sets. Instead, it ends when there's just two of those prey cards left. Now, in a two-player game, I think there's 12 of those prey cards. So the game or round will end once someone has played, I think, the 10th set to the table. So the problem with that is that it removes all the tension because... Every time somebody plays a set, a card is gone. And you can see when the game is going to end. So if one player gets a lead, you can also kind of see, well, I'm not going to have a chance to catch up now. Um, it does kind of encourage people to play smaller sets early 
which I guess I can see is a good thing. You know, there's there was a balance, there was a tension in the original game where you're able to play small sets early, but you're trying to kind of spam it to try to get like a lot of sets because maybe you can reach the end of the of the round early, right? But if you play as like two twenties, the longer the round goes on, the much much more likely that your opponent's going to be able to beat that at some point. But in this game, just play it. As soon as you get two cards, play it because you want the prey card. That's what it comes down to, right? And it loses a lot of tension. But the other thing is that it feels like a little bit of rich get richer because when you play a set, you're right now going to be scoring for that set unless the other player has a chance to beat you. But besides getting the set, you're also getting this bonus. So sometimes the bonus will help you. Like the bonus might be like, draw a new card. Oh, I draw a new card. Oh, maybe that'll help me get a set next round, right? The player who's already playing sets are getting the special powers that will help them in the future or help them hurt their opponent. So it's more, more likely now for the game to become a route, just a route. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Because I haven't played this three or four players. And on paper, I could possibly see that this actually improves the game with three or four players. Because previously, the problem was that the round would sometimes just suddenly end too quickly. And you don't feel like you have a lot of control. But if the game or round ends when the prey cards run out, then all the players have a chance to see that. And there's more prey cards out for three or four player game. So perhaps that improves the three or four player game a little bit, maybe. But I can't get past the fact that those cards ruin the two player game. Absolutely. It's not that I'm not recommending Littlewood. This is my favorite two player game, this series. And this is the one that's out now. So if you want this game, you can get this one. It still has the same 110 cards. Just if you're going to play two player, look up the old rules, how to play Crazy Chicken or Drive or Call to Glory, and just use those. Just don't play with the Prey cards. If you only play games two-player, just put the Prey cards under the insert. Like, don't even look at them twice. For in a two-player game, they are, in my opinion, just horrible. I'm sorry. You know, I, I just feel bad because, you know, Mikhail Schacht is one of my favorite game designers, and this is one of my favorite games of his. And so it really breaks my heart to see the, this amazing two-player game uh, ruined by that edition. Maybe it does improve the game for three or four players. And if you do end up getting this game and you want to play it with three or four, by all means, give it a try. Let me know how it is. But I strongly suggest for two players, stick with the original rules. It's an amazing game. One of my favorite two-player games. Crazy Chicken, Drive, Call to Glory... Little Wood, Ignoring the Prey Cards. Any of those additions will do you great. It's just an amazing two-player game. And I would recommend it to anybody. Anybody who likes Lost Cities, if you want a, that style of game, check out Crazy Chicken. Check out Little Wood. Because it's one of my favorite two-player games. Tons of tension with the original rules. And I, I can't say enough good things about it. One of my favorite two-player games of all time. Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Crazy Chicken slash Drive slash Call to Glory don't stop being good just because new games called Littlewood come out. Take care.